Hello everyone, welcome back to our FTX Safety Reboot module. As I said before in our previous podcast, FTX stands for Feminist Tech Exchange. Our first podcast was online gender-based violence. Our second one was creating safe online spaces. And now we are on our third one, which is our second last one. Again, thank you so much for the feedback that I'm getting, the questions that I'm getting via Twitter. I am trying to respond to them as much as I can. Please share the links of the YouTube to your friends. And yes, I had you. I'm going to put the other two on SoundCloud too. So you're going to be able to access them on two platforms. My name is Cecilia Maundu and this podcast has been brought to you by the generous funding of APC, Association of Progressive Communication. Welcome. This podcast series has been made possible by the generous funding of Association of Progressive Communication. APC is a worldwide network of social activists who use the internet to make the world a better place. Today, our module is on mobile safety. I wish I could ask you how many of you have mobiles by a show of hands, but hey, it's audio, so I can't see you, but assume that we can see each other. So how many of you have mobiles? I'm assuming almost everyone. And um, as I said before, we are in the fourth revolution, which is the digital revolution. And one of the most key gadgets that we have is mobile. It's basically our mini computer. And as we advance, mobile phones are also advancing. We are now on smartphones where you can be able to do everything on your smartphone. And hence why this module was created, mobile safety. So in this module, we are going to share with our participants on ways and strategies on how to use your phone safely. As I said, our phones are like mini computers nowadays, working in our bags, in our pockets, everywhere we go. So how can you be able to use your mobile safely and especially in the context that you are in? Maybe you're an activist, you're a sexual rights activist, you're a woman journalist, whoever you are, how can you be able to use your mobile safely? We rely on our phones to process and store personal digital data, our digital activities that is like mobile banking, when you're paying for a product, also for sending messages, whether official or personal messages. So basically, our phones are goldmine of personal information. So how do we protect this goldmine of ours so that our data doesn't fall in the wrong hands? It is also predicted that by 2020, which is in six months, there will be more than 6 billion smartphone users in the world. It is also, this is a projection, that by 2020, there will be more than 6 billion smartphone users in the world. Basically, smartphone users will be on a competition to outdo the population of China. How amazing is that? But the question we're asking ourselves, how secure is your mobile device? And that your mobile phone is a pocket-sized computer. So this uh, module offers guidelines for facilitating conversation about how women rights and sexual rights activists experience the access to mobile technology and communications differently based on their gender and sexual identities. We will also talk about how we use our mobiles for personal and official communication and the strategies and tools in which we can be able to keep our mobile communications safe. Strategies in which we can keep the data that we store in our smartphone safe. There are common questions that we hear. The other day I was in a training and somebody asked me, how can I know that my phone has been hacked? Those are some of the questions that we are going to answer in this module, yes. And then remember in every module of FTX, there's a learning objective. And one of the major learning objective of this mobile safety is understanding how mobile access and communications are gendered and intimate. Also understanding of mobile communication safety from the perspective that we keep a lot of information in our mobiles. So... Remember one of the best thing about FTX module is the learning activity. And one of activities that we're going to choose from this is mobile power. So let's look at what mobile power has as a learning objective and what is it all about. So this is a collaborative 
activity and where the participants will be in groups and they, they will be able to discuss in their groups how they relate to their phone devices, even their, their service provider. So mobile power is our first activity. People will be in groups. One of the best things about group work is to be able to get the cross-pollination of ideas. So we are able to share ideas as a group. In this activity, they will be able to tackle uh, questions like how do they relate to their mobile devices in terms of mobile banking, their service providers. And we suggest to do this activity at the start of a mobile safety workshop. Back again to the issue of what you learn, understanding of mobile communication safety from this perspective that mobile phones are tools for both personal. So one of the activity is understanding the issue of mobile safety from this perspective that we use our mobile phones for both private communication, public communication, very sensitive information, and also understanding the basic concepts of how mobile communications work in order to better understand the risks of mobile communication. This activity requires 45 minutes and doesn't need a lot of resources. You just need a chart paper and markers. So the, the participants will be able to ask themselves a series of questions. The goal is to be able to find out a way of uh, how the participants go about using their mobile phones and how they relate to their mobile phones. And by the end of this activity, as a facilitator, you'll be able to know how your participants relate with their mobile phones, service providers, how safe do they feel with their phones? Do they share their phones with people? What are the repercussions of sharing their phones with people? Their service providers, how did they decide to choose their service providers? What makes them feel comfortable about their service providers? How they chose the current devices that they're using? Which platform are they on? Is it Android or iOS? And all that. As I said before, the purposes of this activity is to know how you relate with your mobile phone in terms of maybe the platform. Is it Android? Is it iOS? How safe do you feel with your mobile phone? So our next activity is what is a phone? How does mobile communication work? The purpose of this activity is to deepen your knowledge of how mobile communication works to support a participant's ability to access and plan for risks of mobile communication. Remember, your mobile is like your mini computer and you're working with it like full time. One of the learning objectives of this activity is to understand how some basic concept of how mobile communication works in order to inform ourselves about the potential impacts of using mobile communication. So we will look at inside our phones in terms of the different parts that intertwine together to make our phone. That is the microphones, the speakers, the parts that display visuals, your camera. If you're like me, like taking pictures for purposes of memory and all that stuff. The places that receive information from other sources, that is your GPS, your Wi-Fi, your software, your hardware, your memory card, and your SIM card slots. All this is to familiarize. Remember, this is to familiarize ourselves with mobile communication. So after we look at the things that are intertwined in our phones, we look at our mobile communication. As, as we look at our mobile communications and we've looked at what encompasses to make it a mobile device in terms of the things that it, it has, and now we want to look at how we use that mobile for communication. We have SMS, which is text messages. We have media messages. We have the main form of communication in mobile, which is calls. And also, we use these phones of ours to get into social media, to send emails, all this in one device. As we look at all the ways that we can communicate using our mobiles, we also need to look at ways on how this puts us at risk as women journalists, as sexual rights activists, and in whatever capacity that you're in. When it comes to things like using a public Wi-Fi, always make sure that when you're using a public Wi-Fi, you try not to do sensitive tasks like mobile transacting because it is very easy for hackers to be able to hack your phone when you're using public Wi-Fi. And if you're using a public Wi-Fi, use a shared public Wi-Fi which has a password. It is more secure than an open public Wi-Fi. Some of the apps that we have in our phones, especially if we have not downloaded them from a legit platform like Google Play Store that is for 
Android or Apple Store for iOS. If you download them from platforms which are not legit, you can get what we call third party apps. These third party apps are able to collect your metadata. So try as much as you can to download your apps from Google Play Store or Apple Store if we are using iOS. Make sure that you're on a platform that updates its software and also uh, our phones comes when they are encrypted which is a very good advantage. And remember our phones can be infected by what we call malware. Malware is what we call malicious malishousware. One of the signs that you have a malicious malishousware attack on your phone is your device starts operating very slowly or your battery drains more rapidly than usual. Make sure always your Bluetooth is off if you're not using it. Always switch off your Wi-Fi if you're not using it because this is also a way hackers can be able to get your information. And then we come to what we call a deepening activity which is debate documentation of violence. We can use our mobiles to be able to document violence or even to keep evidence in case that violence has happened. In this tactical activity, we are going to look at back it up, lock it and delete it. So in case you're, you're participating in a protest, how will you make sure your phone is safe at the same time use it for purposes of contacting other people and also at the same time for the purposes of documenting whatever is happening because you remember our phones are our mini computers and we are able to keep documentation in them. At the same time, how are we going to make sure our mobiles are safe when crossing borders, that is in terms of the information that we have, it will not be intercepted and be taken by someone else. And also mobile safety when there is a threat of arrest and seizure. So before you go with your phone in a protest, let people know what situation you'll be in. What are the risks in this situation? That is, is it an illegal protest? If it is an illegal protest, meaning you'll be more in danger than a legal protest, what is the information that you have in your phone that you want it to remain private? If it is the border, make sure that the information that you don't want it to be intercepted. Maybe you are a sexual rights activist and you're crossing in a border where a country has issues with sexual rights activists. Make sure the information that you have, you've backed it on your cloud so that someone is not able to access it. Remember, all these activities are for the purposes of making your participant understand the importance of mobile safety to manage the impact of our communication on ourselves, our colleagues, and our movements. When we are able to know how we relate or how crucial our mobiles are in terms of communication and in terms of even our security because the information that we have in our phone depending on the context that you are in can put you in trouble not only you but other people in general so the purpose of this mobile safety module is for the participants to know how they relate with their phone and how crucial it is to keep the information that they have on their phone safe how to keep the data in their phone safe in different circumstances whether in a protest whether crossing the borders or even how we are able to keep our phones safely so uh, we've come to the end of mobile safety this module has so so much more i would encourage you to go online and find out more on the website which is www.ftxreboot.apc.org i will put the website on the youtube so that you can check it out so we've come to the end of today's podcast so sad because this mobile safety module has so much to offer and that's why i encourage you to go online we'll put the website on the youtube channel so that you can be able to see it and you go and find out more remember the purposes of this module as a facilitator is to find out how your participants relate with their mobile phones how are they able to keep their communication safe in this era whereby we do everything on our phones they are basically our mini laptops thank you so much for joining me see you next week for our last podcast which is on self-care very very interesting you would not want to miss it thank you so much mm-hmm.